Today I'm designing a very simple fire surround for a customer so I thought I'd let you have a laugh at my very limited sketchup skills. Hiya and welcome back. Today I'm putting together a really quick design on SketchUp for an Art Deco fireplace fire surround thing. The customer's given us an idea of what they want. So I now need to come up with a bit of a more detailed design. It should take about 15 minutes to put it together. So I thought I would just show you the whole design process from beginning to end. I know a few of you are a little bit nervous about using stuff like SketchUp for the first time. And honestly, I was terrible at it when I first started using it. You could argue I'm still pretty terrible at it now. You've just got to chuck yourself in there and start using it really. As with everything, the more you use it, the better you get at it. And I would suggest at a starting point, if nothing else, pick something you've already built and put that into SketchUp and put your own design together for something you've already done, rather than giving yourself the pressure of using it on a customer job for the very first time. But you know, running a joinery business isn't all about hammers and chisels and big saws. You need some way of showing the customer what you're actually gonna build for them. And for me, SketchUp is the tool of choice for this. Now, if you're a seasoned SketchUp user, please turn off now. You're gonna find this painful. I'm an absolute beginner with the product, but I just really wanted to show you from my very, very basic limited knowledge of the product, how I can knock a design together relatively quickly. There's loads of really, really good videos on YouTube of how to use SketchUp. If you are a bit more of an advanced user, please feel free to pop in the comments any suggestions as to what I could have done to make my life easier when putting this design together. You will come across lots of things and it'll be like, no, don't do that. Please pop it in the comments because I'm still learning as well. Reet, let's get this done. Right, so I've already put in the, the hearth bit at the bottom here, and I've put in the marble or granite, whatever it is, back plate. What would you call that? Mantle back or something like that? Anyway, those are set in stone and can't be changed. So first of all, let's define how big we want this to be. So we need it to be, I've got T for tape measure, and I'm gonna bring a guide up, it needs to be, 12, 15 mil high. So I'm typing in one, two, one, five and enter. And that puts a guide at 12, 15. I also want it to be 13, 10 wide. So 13, 10 divided by two, because I'm gonna measure from this midpoint here, six, five, five. Ah, uh, we've got a guide coming down. Let's see if we can do it. Six five five. Uh, why won't it do that? Okay. I've just temporarily drawn that. Okie dokie. Whoops. I'm gonna make a rectangle which is going from this top corner, we want it to be 13, 10, and down to the bottom. So down to there, and we can see, if you look on the measurement thing on the bottom right corner here, we want it to be 13, 10. So I'm just gonna type in comma, 13, 10. Whoops, okay, that's interesting. Why has that not worked? You're gonna see every mistake here and uh, something to do with this rectangle. Am I, am I even at the midpoint there? So what did we say? 655. Five. Right, rectangle from that corner, comma 1310. We want it to be 220 deep. So P for push pull. And I'm gonna pull it out, 220. I'm just typing in 220. You'll see the numbers going in the bottom right corner and I press enter and that's pulled it out 220. Now, this has to have three levels of insetness on it. And it's gonna to have to inset 220 minus the depth of the mantle back. So if I do 220 
and the mantle back I know is 25 mil thick, so I do 220 minus 25, it's 195 divided that by 3, so 65, I'm just making a note of that for now because I'm going to need that, you'll see where I'm going with this, it's how deep each of the little kind of sections are going to be, because it has to go in by equal thirds, but oh, it needs to stop at the mantle back, it doesn't need to go all the way at the wall. Then we need to measure it equal thirds along this way. Now, we know that the mantle back, let me just, uh, I don't want to group this object yet. Okay, I'm going to group it anyway. G to group. Now I'm just going to hide it. This mantle back here, that is the absolute minimum height that the fireplace can come into do you know what i mean so it can't be inset above this otherwise you're going to see a gap above the granite mantle back i need to know the distance from the top of that to there and that is going to be 1215 which is the overall height of the fire surround minus 940 which is the height of the slab. So it's 275, and then I need to divide that by three to split it into thirds. And we've got 91, say 92. I don't want to be exactly on it, so I'm going to make it 93. You'll see where I'm going with this in a minute. Let me just switch this back on, unhide it. Okie dokie. We need to put a guide in, 93. 93 and then another one this should lock on is it locking on nope 93 and 93 okay so actually let's just try and delete guides when you finish with them otherwise i guarantee they will get in the road and you'll accidentally snap to them so here's our first Inset, so we're gonna go, oh, I grouped this object, so I'm gonna have to edit inside it. So I'm triple clicking to edit inside the object. So I'm gonna go rectangle up to there, and then push pull, and I'm going in the 65, that number that we made a note of earlier. Right, that's our first inset, easy. Second inset, 93. 93, another rectangle. P for push-pull. And we're going in 65 again. And then exactly the same again. 93, 93, 93. R for rectangle. There's not many shortcut keys that you need to know in SketchUp, but R for rectangle, P for push-pull, O for moving around, these are all really common ones that you're going to use. M for move, H for hand. I'll show them on the screen over here for a bit. So R for rectangle, and we're going to do a rectangle in there. P for push-pull, and we're going to take that all the way as far back as it'll go, and then that gets rid of it completely. There we go. That is basically our fire surround done. Now... At the minute, this... Oh, no, it is an object. I have grouped it. I was going to say, if you'd done this before grouping it, you would now triple-click and G to group it, make it into a component. But I'd already done that, so I just need to click off this to get out of it. I'm just going to delete all these guides. Oh, I've put the guides as part of it. Okay. I'm going to have to... Oops. There we go. I just need to click into it because the guides are in the component. I've, cl I've created the guides while I was inside the object, so I'm having to triple click the object to get into it. You see, I'm like that. And then I can click the guides. That one's outside it. That one's in. That one's in. You can tell if they turn blue. These ones are out, so I can come out and delete these. La oh, uh, delete the wall. Control Z to undo. Uh, 
think that's all the guides. So there we go. Okay, something not right here because I can't see the wall. That's it. I hadn't pushed it all the way back. Hey, what's going on? Undo, undo. Ah. Let's, I'm just going to temporarily make the surround, uh, we'll make it blue. And we'll make the back mantle green. Ugh, that's a horrible green. Let's, that'll do. And the reason I've made the wall red is because what I do want to check is that we're not seeing any of the wall. Because if I just hide this, You'll see, if I zoom right in, we've just got this tiny overlap between the bottom of the fire surround and the top of the mantle. That's quite a critical bit because you don't want to be able to see the top of this granite fire back mantle thing. So that's essentially it. That's enough now that I can go back to the customer and say, are you happy with this? I can't really make the proportions any different to this because if I make these, not without completely changing the design and coming up with something that the customer hasn't asked for, but if I radically change this, if I just unhide that, if I was to change this, let's say that I made these thirds smaller, then the whole thing is gonna come up and if the whole thing comes up on this edge, you're going to be able to see the top of this granite back plate. The only option is to do it the way that I've done it there. I've only got a two millimeter overlap or thereabouts. So there's very, very little margin for error. The last stage of this. So I think that'll look okay. We've got this 220 mil, um, Oops, 220 mil depth on it. And I think there's a, an Art Deco fireplace. It looks pretty good. I think the final stage, let's just make it look a little bit prettier. So I'm gonna draw, oops, draw a rectangle at the front here to make it look like a bit of a fire. G for component. Um, I'm going to make that like a silvery colour. The surround is a kind of um, beige, where it's technically the same colour as that bottom bit. They do have, they've got, oh no, they've got wooden floors now. Uh, right, let's pop some wooden floors in. See if there's a one where the grain goes the other direction. Can I get the grain to go the other way? There we go. I just want to make these a different colour of the wall so that they stand out a bit more. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to make that and that, that kind of slightly darker colour. And then we'll have the walls as being that colour. And this is going to end up being the same colour as the walls. Or at least that's the plan. So that's kind of what it's going to look like. I need to get this over to the customer and check they're happy with this. We've got a rogue guide. Can you see that little blob in the corner there? That's a rogue guide. We'll delete that. And that's it. From there, I'll tell you what, I'll do everything that I would do for the customer and I'll show you. So from that, what I would then do, I would get a nice angle, maybe like that. And we're going to view scenes. Where's scenes gone? Animation, add scene. What? That's scene one. I'll just always right click and make sure you've updated it. And then we'll go round like that and add a new scene. And then we'll do another one where we'll look kind of head on. Another one where we'll look kind of down on it. And then we'll finish off pretty much back to where we started. Like, let's 
let's come round. It's just to try and give them as best idea as possible of what this is actually going to look like once it's done. And that's it. And now when I go scene one, scene two, scene three, scene four, scene five. And all I'll do is I'll record that as a screen capture for the customer. I'll shove it on YouTube and they can have a look. And then once they've given the OK, I can go ahead and get it built. And that's it all done and dusted. Don't forget to save. Now, of course, what this doesn't show is the internal structure of what I'm building here. And it doesn't show me how I'm actually going to physically build it. For a smaller project like this, I've got a good enough idea in my head of how I'm gonna put it together. If it was a bit more of a more complicated project, I would literally design every single joint in SketchUp because trust me, it will save you a ton of time later down the line. And it also gets you more used to using SketchUp, you know, there are very, very quick ways of copying and pasting joints around so you don't literally need to draw every single joint. But for something like this, I've got a fairly good idea of how I'm gonna put it together anyway. I'll try to film the actual build of this project, assuming the customer wants to go ahead with it. So don't forget to hit subscribe, wherever subscribe is. And also remember there's extra content over on my Patreon where I talk a little bit more about the pricing of joints like this for customers. Thanks again for watching. I shall see you next time. Bye.